Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents have built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, welcome to the show. Welcome to Super Agents Live. Hey, thank you for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. And if you're new, welcome. What we do on this show, we talk about real estate. Well, I uncover, I bring on coaches, authors, agents, and talk about how they are killing it. And hopefully, you know, look, along the way, you learn nuggets and you implement in, implement them in your business. Um, and before we get to that, uh, uh, or before we get to the show, today's uh, today is a solo show. Um, on Wednesdays, I do uh, solo shows instead of having somebody come on. And look, sometimes having having a, a you know a, a co-host or somebody to come on and uh, for me to interview interview sometimes that's you know it's easy right that's fun um, but when I have to sit down and write a post you know create some content of my own it's work. Uh, so I only do it once a week and hopefully you like it. Hopefully, you know, it's a nice, um, a nice mix to the routine. Uh, before we get to that, um, let's hear a message from our sponsor. We all know the best kind of referral is one from our sphere or farm, but how do we stay top of mind? Now, most people, they take a three pronged approach, right? They door knock in their farm, they call people and they mail them. Most people fall down by not getting to their people, their sphere, their farm, they don't get them engaging content. And look, you know, sure, we can list them a postcard or we can send them an article that we think is going to be of interest to them. Our new sponsor, Discover Publications, takes that one step further. For just slightly more than the cost of a stamp, Discover Publications creates a completely customized newspaper. Now, they'll go out and they'll curate content or you can create your own. All of my sponsors are white leveled. Now, I called... Prior to having them on the show, I called some of Discover Publications clients, and I talked to this one guy, and he does some interesting things. He'll go out and interview restaurants that are in his farm, in his sphere. He creates a write-up. He, interestingly enough, resells advertising in his own newspaper to his trusted network, whether that's the plumber or the insurance agent. And by the way, this guy has 60% market penetration. He told me the paper has cemented those numbers. If you're interested, go check out discoverpubs.com. Let me know what you think. Okay, now on this show, before we get to a little housekeeping, uh, if you've been listening for a while, the hashtag for this show is Unpack That Idea. That's a big follow train. Uh, tweet something out that you hear in this episode or another, um, and I'll follow you. And um, I re- encourage everybody in our community, our tribe, to follow and help one another, right? This whole thing is about community. Um, the membership site, is coming along nicely, uh, so stay tuned for that. And and uh, once we get that membership site up and going, uh, we're gonna let you know. We're gonna let you guys in, and uh, and we have a private Facebook group where we can all explain what we're doing, uh, explain where we're stuck, and hopefully get some inspiration and motivation from others in this community. And uh, and by the way, if you want to start the, joining the community again, do it on Twitter. We really do have a thriving community there. Now look. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is persistence. Uh, You know, here's what I've seen. And it's amazing in real estate. I see people that are extremely smart, right? Really, really smart people, but they just can't make it. They can't hack it. You know, they, they try to sell real estate and they get frustrated and move on. I see other folks that, uh, that uh, it's amazing, man. You know, I talk with people sometimes and they have no personality. They are flat. They're vanilla. Um, and, uh, but they're doing 50, $60 million a year. I, I honestly, man, that sort of disparity, I, I, I can't get my head around it. But, you know, I can only say, hey, look, that's the magic of real estate. If you, whoever you are out there and whatever talent you have or not, you can be the super introvert, introverted person. But there is a way to go out and create a thriving business in real estate. And, you know, a lot of it boils down to this. 
And and we all know it. It's work. You got to outwork the guy next to you. <clears throat> so and you guys and what it, what it, what does it take to work every day? Right to 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 get in there and just keep charging. It is persistence. You have to have persistence. We all know it. <clears throat> but. Um, you know, are we, you know, for you, are you, do you have enough persistence, you know, or do you quit too soon? Have you ever quit too soon? <clears throat> Look, we all have times where we have, right? It got too hard and uh, we gave up, you know, we did it for a month or two and we said, Hey, farming doesn't work, you know, whatever it is. <clears throat> so I'm going to start this, uh, this, this episode <clears throat> with a quote from Calvin Coolidge. Here's the quote. Nothing in the world can take place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan, press on, has solved and always will solve the problems of the human race. Do you believe that? Do you believe that persistence is more important than genius, is more important than education, is more important than talent? I hope that you do, because not all of us are talented, not all of us are genius, and not everybody has an education, <clears throat> but if you have persistence, you can win. So let's, get, let's dig into this. What is it? What is persistence? We've heard the word, but <clears throat> what is it? Now, persistence is the ability to maintain action regardless of how you feel, right? Take action and maintain that, right? <clears throat> persistence is when you press on, even when you feel like quitting. So, <clears throat> you know, when you work on any big goal, your motivation for that goal will will wax and wane you know it's like it's like waves hitting the shore right they come in and they go back out sometimes you feel motivated sometimes you don't but it's not your motivation that's going to prove results right it's your action you can be totally motivated you can be totally pumped up you know at midnight after you had this great idea or whatever but in the morning if you lose that motivation you're not going to take action so your motivation is not going to get you there it's persistence. Persistence allows you to keep taking action even when you don't feel motivated, <clears throat> even when you feel demotivated. Persistence will get you results. And persistence ultimately, here's the funny thing about persistence. Persistence ultimately can provide its own motivation, right? So, it, so it, let me unpack it a little bit, right? If you keep taking action, you're going to get revolt, results. You eventually will get results, you know, and those revolts, results, I don't know why I can't say that. Those results can be super mo motivating, right? So you go out and you're going to make a hundred phone calls today. If you keep doing that hundred phone calls <clears throat> day after day or those hundred doors or whatever it is, um, you're going to get results and then you're going to go, Hey, look, this works. And you're going to go, you're going to get motivated to do more. So persistence can provide its own motivation. You know, you know, I mean, look, uh, here's a, here's a, uh, an example that, that uh, maybe you can relate with, right. And it's, it's dieting, right. You're not going to be that super motivated about dieting, about not eating chocolate cake or eating less of it or whatever it is. But if you do, if you stay persistent about dieting and, and getting some exercise, once you lose that first 10 pounds and your, your clothes start feeling more loosely, what do you feel? You feel motivated to, you know, not eat that cake or eat less of it. Okay. <clears throat> so should you, you know, I know that, you know, people give up too soon. People give up, you know, they start a marketing campaign. They give up because they don't see results in the first month, whatever it is, right? <clears throat> you have to say persistent and you have to say consistent and you will get results. Should you always persist? Should you always just keep charging and never give up? Absolutely not. Sometimes giving up is the best option. Now, when the, it's a, a, a different question that I may not get into, but you know, how do you know when to give up? Now, look, I'm, let me, in terms of giving up or pressing on, have you ever heard of a company called Traff Odata? Have you ever heard of a company called Microsoft? Now, both companies were started by Bill Gates and Paul Allen. Traff Odata was the first company they started back in 1972. Um, and Gates and Allen, they, they ran it for a few years before they gave up. Uh, of course, 
You know Microsoft. And of course, you know, at one point, what Bill Gates was worth like $96 billion or something. <clears throat> so um, if Bill and Paul Allen, my old friend Bill, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Gates, if if Gates and Allen had not given up on traffic data, uh, we obviously wouldn't have Microsoft today and uh, and all the great things that Bill Gates is doing, you know, in terms of in Africa. So how do you know? <clears throat> how do you know? when to press on and when to give up. Here's a question, right? Is your plan still correct? If it's not, update your plan. <clears throat> is your goal still on track? Is your goal still correct? Is it, is it the, do you have the right goal? If it's not, update <clears throat> or abandon that goal. There's no honor in clinging to a goal that no longer inspires you. Persistence is not stubbornness. Again, it's just the ability to maintain action. Now, this is a lesson that persistence that, that I struggle with, and I can tell you why. I'm super persistent, and here's how I became persistent, oddly enough. Uh, you know, in college, I read uh, you know, my first Anthony Robbins book, uh, Awaken the Giant Within. Anthony Robbins starts that book off with saying, hey, congratulations that you started this book, and he said, did you know that only 10% of people finish a book once they started. Then it was, I was like, I did not know that. And, uh, and um, when I read that, I, I vowed at, at that point, I said, I will never ever start a book and not finish it. And then I, and then it was like everything else, right? I never ever start a project without finishing it. Even though, even though in reality, I'm really kind of like an 85% guy, I get 85% of it done and, and the last 15%, I just, it's all the detail stuff. So I'm like, ugh, you know, <clears throat> so, but for the most part, I finish what I start and it was from understanding, you know, that only 10% of people, uh, uh, only 10% finish the book that they start. <clears throat> now here's where persistence goes wrong with me. If I start a book and it turn and it's terrible. I still finish it and I know that I'm wasting my time, but like, I just can't quit. <clears throat> um, if I start a movie and it's terrible, I end up wasting an hour just to finish it. <clears throat> and you know, I, I personally need to work on determining when to press on versus when to give up. <clears throat> and I'm look, I'm getting a little bit better at it. So for you, you know, if you're growing at all as a human being and hopefully you're growing, <clears throat> um, you're going to be a different person every year than you were the previous year. You know, there's a, there's an interesting stat, you know, if you can, if, can you get 1% better today? Just 1%, right? And, uh, and better than anything, 1% better, um, you know, as a salesperson, as a marketer, as a human being, as a father, as a husband, <clears throat> can you get 1% better today? And if you can, which you can, <clears throat> um, that means at the end of the year, you're going to be 365% better right? Because it's 1% growth every year. Uh, I'm sorry, every day. Isn't that amazing? You know, a 365% growth for you every year. Uh, you know, and look, if you can, if you can think about that in terms of your business, um, you can have that. That's how, that's how these people who don't have talent, who don't have genius, who don't have education, <clears throat> that's how they build $60 million with a vanilla personality because they just get 1% better every, every day. That's it. <clears throat> so for you and me, all of us, you know, if we can constantly pursue personal growth, personal development, <clears throat> we're going to right six months from now, we're going to be, we're going to be dramatically different. We're going to be dramatically better. So <clears throat> now, for you, 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 we can't guarantee that the goals we set today are still going to be the goals we want to achieve a year from now, especially if we are getting that kind of, of personal growth. Uh, um, so we need to leave room in our life to shift and shimmy um, and, uh, our goals, right? Um, the goals that we have today, the, what we can see that we can accomplish today as we get, you know, 50% better than we are, um, we are going to have, it's going to pave the way to have bigger goals. So, you know, we need to, as we go along, we need to delete goals and get new ones, you know, and look, sometimes as we grow, 
and and we can and and we get better at at, uh, at our craft and and you know whether again that's sales or being a better husband or being a better dad or being a better friend <clears throat> new vision we, you know bigger visions bigger goals will be available to our minds right and and those new goals can be so compelling and so inspiring <clears throat> that you know those old goals that we set just like they have to be abandoned because they're again they're not inspira- inspirational anymore for us now again as i said earlier i've always found it sort of hard to abandon goals <clears throat> but i know it's necessary you know it's it's the hard part is to consciously decide to delete an old product project for example <clears throat> knowing that it's never gonna be done now for me i have a file i have a i have a drawer f- and I, I, I have books and books of of ideas and prototypes for stuff that <clears throat> i know i will never complete and consciously deciding that those product projects had to be abandoned, right? You know, and I look, I have a project up right now. So the company that I started prior to doing Super Agents Live is called Task Hero, T-A-S-K-H-E-R-O. You can go check it out, taskhero.com. And it was a, it was a site where uh, you can outsource um, tasks, right? So if uh, the wife buys this big four foot mirror uh, and she doesn't know how to hang it, or you don't know as the, as the man, as the husband, if you don't know how to hang it, you can just post that job on, uh, on uh, taskhero.com and, uh, and people will bid on it, right? You know, the kid across the street or down the road or the, the, the contractor, uh, you know, on the next corner can say, Hey, listen, Ricky, I'll, you know, I'll, or Toby or, or Martha, you know, I'll do that for 60 bucks. So it was a great idea. I launched it in 2011 when the economy was bad and, and, uh, and unemployment was high. I thought it should have taken off. And it could have taken off, but man, it just like, it was just, it was ramping that up, you know, building a two-sided marketplace, which where you, where you have to build a marketplace where you get the buyers and the sellers. It was just too much work. And I felt like, you know, to get to, uh, you know, certainly for this show, you know, I've, I've shared it before, you know, you know, through this show, you know, I want to make a million bucks. I want to have a seven figure business. <clears throat> now, for Task Hero, I, I, it, it could have been a, a, a high seven-figure business, but it, it might be 10 years from now. I just, I just don't have that kind of patience. <clears throat> so I scrapped it. Now, it's still up, but I scrapped it. Now, that was hard to do because I spent about 100 grand. I spent about 80 grand, to be honest with you, and I lost about a year of my life. So uh, getting back on track, we're talking about persistence. Now, <clears throat> for me, I, you know, I had to solve the problem of setting a goal like Task Hero that might be uh, <clears throat> might be obsolete in a year due to my own personal growth. So how did I solve this problem? <clears throat> I cheated. I figured out the only way that I could set long-term goals that would stick is if they were in line or aligned with my own process of personal growth, right? The pursuit of personal growth has been, has been a constant for me. Right. I mean, I, I think that's how for me, for my success, you know, I just wanted to grow. If you if you have listened to, I, you know, we had Grant Cardone on the show, I think somewhere in the 50s. Great episode. And I said, hey, man, you are a, a wealthy guy. Why do you keep going? And he said, you know what? He said, yeah, it, it's not about the money. It's about, you know, I want to achieve everything that I can achieve. I want, I want to reach my own personal potential. I'm like, that is so awesome. Reaching your own personal potential. <clears throat> so hopefully, you know, I, so I want to reach my personal potential and hopefully you do too. <clears throat> so, you know, so we have to set goals that are aligned with our own personal development. So, you know, if, we, and, and you know, and, and by the way, what I love about uh, this show is I'm growing just like you guys, we're growing together. You know, I, we bring all these top producing agents on, they tell their stories, they, you know, and, uh, and we, uh, you know, I learn about mindset. I grow every time I spend an hour with a new person, which is really cool. And I hope, I hope you do too. So this new business, right? This, this show allows me to pursue, oddly enough, it allows me to pursue my own personal growth and then I can share what I'm learning with other people. So for me, the, you know, my personal growth uh, it itself is, is a goal, is a big goal. And it's a, it's a goal for myself and others. And it creates this, it's, it's amazing. The show kind of creates this symbiotic relationship where both I'm growing and I'm helping other people grow. Hopefully you're growing 
from the show and from and while I grow. So anyhow, I, I got I think I went down a rabbit hole for a second here. Um, so um, the direct and conscious pursuit of personal growth is the only type of mission that that would work for me. You know, so, you know, if, if for example, I, you know, I, I have a big real estate investor, right? So if I made it my mission to master real estate investing um, and that was it, I'd, I, I got bored with it, right? I mastered it, man. I did all sorts of different deals and I, I had to move on. It wasn't about money. It was about personal growth. So because I wanted to keep growing indefinitely, I had to maintain a certain level of challenge and I had to keep raising the bar higher. <clears throat> I couldn't let things get too dull. <clears throat> or I would just fall into a pattern of complacency. And I learned a long time ago, complacency is death. You have to challenge yourself constantly. <clears throat> the value of persistence comes not from stubbornly clinging to the past, <clears throat> but it comes from a vision of the future that's so compelling that you would give almost anything to make it real. The vision I have today for, of my future is way bigger than it was two years ago. You know, two years ago when I launched Task Hero, I figured that I could grow it and 24 months, you know, two or three years later, I figured I'd get to the point where, you know, I could sell it for three or four million bucks. That was sort of my goal. And today, like, I have a bigger goal, man. I th This show, I want this show to be every agent and entrepreneur in America. <clears throat> I want to listen to this show. Um, I want people to be inspired and, you know, in turn, while I grow, right, I, I've said it before, right, I want to be the Anthony Robbins of real estate. So it's, it's, I'm so excited about, about what I'm doing today and building this platform because it, it, it just is aligned, right? I mean, I'm helping people, I'm growing, I'm, I'm building this platform and it's, it's, it's just it's the first time in a long time that that I that I have felt that I found something that speaks to me on so many different levels. <clears throat> so, persistence. I keep kind of getting off track. Persistence of action comes from persistence of vision. If you've ever read Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, right? He talks about creating that hot, burning, white hot heat of desire around <clears throat> your vision. And, you know, we talk about knowing your why in the show a lot. <clears throat> you know, do you know your why? When you're super clear about what you want and you have that and your vision in line, you're going to be consistent. You're going to be persistent in everything you do. When With my coaching clients, <clears throat> by the way, I have room for one more. If you uh, if you are thinking about getting a coach, give me a call. I'm happy to, to let's get on a call and see if you and I are a good fit. But one thing I try to do is, is with my clients, I'm like, hey, let's get, I want all of your actions. I want your vision. I want everything to point to one point on the shore. If, if all of our actions can be aligned with our vision and we are persistent and consistent with our, what we do every day in terms of prospecting or whatever, do you think you could ever not be successful? <clears throat> Consistency of action will produce consistent results. You will not get that porpoising effect that we always see in everybody's business. <clears throat> Anyhow, so for you, <clears throat> just, you know, look, can you identify a part of your life where you've demonstrated a pattern of long-term persistence? And if you can think of an area where you were just, you know, maybe it was when you were a kid, you played, you love to play baseball, right? So you love to play baseball. You join the baseball team. Um, uh, it, when that happens and we see, you know, it's easy to see in kids, right? It's easy to see in kids where their passion is aligned with their vision. I want to be the best baseball player and I love to play baseball. And, and what are the, you know, what do you see, right? They're, they're, you know, they're out there in the mornings before school practicing baseball, you know, look, how can they not become a great baseball player? Why do we lose that when we grow up? Why do we start to separate work and play and think, Hey, you know, work needs to be hard and play should be fun. And, you know, I mean, what a, a, a disparity, right? A true rich life is when you get to do what you love to do every single day. So let's, how to, what are some tricks? Let me say this. Here's some good news, right? Um, persistence is something that we can all develop. If you don't have it, um, you can develop it. So l I want to give you six tricks or tips, whatever, for gaining persistence. 
All right. So number one, set goals. Man, set goals. How boring. (laughs) We know that we need to set goals, but do you? Do you have a set of goals that is aligned with your vision? Do you have a vision? Hopefully you do, but you have to set goals. So, and look, some tasks are just, are just way too big, right? So, so maybe, you know, you're saying, Hey, I want to be JV crumb that was on the show. Just, just, just uh, not too long ago. Um, he said, Hey, Toby, I want to have a hundred million dollars net worth. Now for me, would I like to have a hundred million dollars? I guess I would, but that's just, that's maybe I'm just not there yet. Right. But I, I can't see that in my mind. Can I see 30 million? Yeah, I can see 30 million. And that's kind of been a number that I've had for a long time. Will I get there? Yeah, I, I probably will if I can if I can see it clear enough and 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 keep taking action. But for you, you know, if set you set goals, I I would encourage you to set big goals. Um, but don't make them so big that you just can't you can't make them real to you, right? Hey, I want to be a billionaire. Mm. That's a good goal, man. But you know, look, let's break it up. If you want to have, if you have this giant goal of a billion dollar net worth or whatever it is, you know, you have to start dicing up into manageable pieces because, um, we need to be able to measure our performance, right? If we can't measure it, we can't manage it. So again, as you know, for me, so set goals Two, keep the end in mind. If we have this big goal and we dice it up, don't just think of the small goals, but but keep thinking of that big goal, right? Keep thinking of the big win. <clears throat> what will persisting to the end do for you? And if the re- if if you can have that vision, if you can clearly see it, and the reward is big enough for you, <clears throat> you, we, all of us, we can stay on task when the difficulties become discouraging. Because you know what? You're going to run into roadblocks. You're going to get discouraged. Weird crap in life is going to happen. You know, one of my, my, my coaching clients, we got him on track. We spent some time working together and, uh, he was real sort of all over the map. We put him on track. We did all the right things and all of a sudden bang, right? Uh, $1.1 million listing, $1.3 million, $1.8 million listing. Boom, 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 boom. And you know what just happened out of the blue? Man, he's listening right now. He had a big life change. He could something unforeseen. I don't want to say it, but something unforeseeable happened. And all of a sudden his life just completely got out of whack. So that life happens. So, you know, we have to keep the end in mind. And if we can keep the end in mind, if we can have a vision and a goal that is big enough that it is compelling and inspiring, it will help us get through those those roadblocks, those challenges that we come up with, right? Again, life gets in the way. So three, improve your pace and renew your enthusiasm. So if you can set goals and you can measure your progress as we go along, you know, we're working against deadlines, you know, we have milestones and those milestones, those deadlines are going to help us to accomplish more and more quickly. (laughs) Progress that we make can keep us energized for the long haul. Now, how, I don't know if you've ever heard of something called Parkinson's law. Now, um, and Tim Ferriss in uh, the four hour work, we talked about it. And basically it is that the ta- if you create a task for yourself and you give yourself a time frame, that task will take up that time frame, right? So if you say, I'm going to uh, uh, task a, whatever it is, I'm going to give myself two hours in my calendar for it. Guess what? You're going to take the whole two hours. Um, uh, if you set that same task, you say, listen, I'm going to, I'm going to complete this task in 30 minutes, no matter what, guess what? You're going to complete that task within 30 minutes. Um, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like when you're in school and you had a book report or something due. I, this is like, this is kind of my life, you know, in a lot of ways, <clears throat> I have a book report due. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I literally wait till like <clears throat> the night before and, uh, uh, I, even in college, I did this, right? I waited till the night before. And all of a sudden, you know, I could scan the book and, and write, you know, have the six pages or four pages that I needed to come up with. And I felt, I felt, I felt great. I felt great. That task that I've been dreading got done. <clears throat> Here's the question. Why didn't I just, just give myself a, a four hour deadline as soon as I got the project? 
I don't know. I don't know. Parkinson's law though. Parkinson's law. <clears throat> if you, so the point that I'm making three is improve your pace and to renew your enthusiasm. Whatever you, you your goals are, you you know, we're going to dice them up. Go ahead and and challenge yourself. If you think it's going to take you an hour, you know, write down 30 minutes and and you know, put a clock there and literally like challenge yourself. All right. <clears throat> run and walk, right? The number 4 is run and walk. When we're working on a big project, <clears throat> it's impossible, impossible to go out all out all the time. But if you can pace yourself, um, you know, you get endurance, right? So there's a guy, he's a running coach, Jeff Galloway. So he, this is what he teaches. He, he teaches people to run marathons and he has a run walk method. So he alternate, he suggests that you alternate periods of intense effort with moderate effort. And if you can do that, you're going to, you're going to go way longer, right? So this applies, this method applies to to everything we do, <clears throat> you know, sometimes we want to just get heads down on a project, right? <clears throat> Writing that business plan or, uh, you know, door, you know, uh, door knocking your area or whatever it might be. <clears throat> if we can learn to run and walk, if we can learn to put intense effort into whatever, whatever we're doing and then pull back intense effort, pull back intense effort, pull back. <clears throat> um, it's going to help us go longer, right? Improve our endurance. <clears throat> so take a break, go easy, relax, rejuvenate, jump back on it. If you don't do that, if you're just all out, all out, all out, especially, you know, new people in real estate, you're all out, you're working eight hours a week, you're working seven days a week. Burnout is right around the corner. You know what? Step back, right? I know you've been running and you're doing 80 hours a week. Step back a little bit, <clears throat> take a day off, right? Turn your phone off, on Sundays, whatever it might be, it will rejuvenate you. It will help you to go longer five. And this one is super important. Kill the distractions. So ex exercising our own determination, our persistence is like exercising any other muscle. Um, now, if we go back to the earlier one, right? Like intense and then pull back, you know, in instead of taking long breaks, or going easy, uh, one thing that will help us to improve our endurance is to remove the extraneous stuff working against our determination and wears us down, right? How many meetings or hobbies or projects, pastimes, relationships, or whatever, how many things in our life are making it impossible to keep up our determination when it matters most, right? So, you know, um, my coach talks to me all the time about, about the cost, uh, the time cost of switching. If we're on a project, right, we're doing research or, you know, we're researching all the, the, our market, whatever that might be. Uh, and then all of a sudden we, we go, oh, I better check my email. Oh, uh, you check your email, then you, and you pop up and you look at all the Facebook new posts that you're mentioned in or whatever. And then you try to go back to that project. Guess what? Science has told us that it takes us 11 minutes to get back to the, to the mindset that we were when we switched, <laughs> kill the distractions and you kill that, you know, you're going to, you're going to improve your, your pace. You're going to improve your quality of work because you're going to kill that time cost of switching. So kill the distractions. <laughs> um, six, this is, this is really important <clears throat> when you think about persistence is change your self image. You know, <clears throat> the most important trick for getting more persistent is to see ourselves as persistent people. This ties into having that vision. <clears throat> if we can see ourselves as a persistent person, when the urge to quit comes up, the first and best response is that quitting is not a part of who we are. We are people who stay the course. We deliver. We get it done. Now, <clears throat> again, when to quit and when not to quit. We talked about Bill Gates. We talked about Paul Allen. There are good reasons to quit all sorts of things. You know, we, we, we're all grateful that Steve Jobs, you know, quit college and, and went out and created the iPad and the iPhone, you know, but he quit because he knew for him that college was pointless. He didn't quit because it was hard. And that is the trick, guys. <clears throat> when it's hard, dig deep, drive forward.
If we can be persistent in our actions, our actions will produce results. And if we always know our why, if we know where we want to get on the shore and we can be persistent about getting there, you're going to get there. You're, you are, you can create the life that you see in your mind. So guys go out <clears throat> and do it. Stay the course. Hey, I hope you, uh, I, I hope you like this episode. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's always sort of a challenge for me to, to think about what is most important to, to my audience. I don't know if this spoke to you. I hope it did. I hope that you got something out of it. If it did send me a message, let me know. All right. Hey, I really appreciate you coming on and, uh, and sticking with me. 33 minutes in. If you've liked it, do me a favor, man. Go to iTunes. Uh, go to Stitcher. Leave me a rating and review, and I'll give you a shout out. All right. Until next time, I'm Toby Salgado. See ya. Let me break in here with a message from our sponsor. Our sponsor, Discover Publications, will create a customized, branded, 12-page newspaper that will be sent out to your farm and sphere. Now, this paper is cheaper than you think. For slightly more than the cost of a stamp, you can start sending out curated content and always stay top of mind. Never lose a deal again because that prospect just happened to forget that you were in real estate or misplaced your number.